The Sith loved their super weapons. From planet killing battle stations to dark side artifacts that could tear through the cores of stars. Count Dooku, the leader of the Confederacy of Independent Systems, was no exception. He sponsored all manner of super weapon projects during the Clone Wars, including Battleship Malevolence, its sister ship Devastation, and the Defoliator Tank. But one of Dooku's most devastating super weapons was actually quite ancient, the Dark Reaper, an artifact that dated back to the Great Sith War. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Dark Reaper and how the Republic stopped it. Attention, Sergeant on deck! During the first few weeks of the Clone Wars, Count Dooku sent a massive armada to capture Ren Var, a seemingly unremarkable ice world near the Tyon Cluster. After a hasty evacuation, the Republic gave the planet up without much of a fight, but the Jedi Council suspected there was more behind the attack than they could see. Thus, they sent a strike force to Raxus Prime, where Dooku went next to determine what was up. There, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, who were still Master and Padawan at the time, discovered that Dooku had come to Raxus Prime to search for some sort of weapon. On Raxus Prime, Skywalker managed to board Dooku's ship, only to be captured by Sidon Prax, a bounty hunter Dooku had hired as a lieutenant. He was taken to Alaris Prime, a moon in the Kashyyyk system where Dooku planned to test the artifact he had unearthed on Raxus Prime. By the skin of his teeth, Skywalker escaped this ancient weapon and alerted the Republic to its presence on the moon. A strike force was called in, but Dooku escaped Alaris Prime with the artifact before it could be captured. Despite this failure, however, Skywalker had managed to uncover some intel about the Count's new toy. It was called the Force Harvester. That name brought up old memories for the Jedi, and not good ones. The Force Harvester was the Sith centerpiece of the Dark Reaper, an ancient Sith superweapon. It had been built on the orders of Naga Sado during the Great Hyperspace War, and restored by Exar Kun and Ulic Keldroma a millennium later and the latter two used it to terrible effect in the Great Sith War. The Force Harvester, the core of the weapon, drained the living force from whatever was within its range, and the rest of the Reaper's mechanisms corrupted and weaponized the resultant force energy. At full power, the Dark Reaper could slaughter thousands at a time. During the Great Sith War, the Brotherhood of the Sith unleashed the Dark Reaper on the Republic, annihilating several Republic staging areas in the Tyon Cluster. However, before the Sith could destroy the Republic, Jedi Knight turned Sith Lord Ulic Keldroma returned to the light. As part of his effort to make up for his many crimes, Keldroma taught the Jedi how to resist the effects of the Force Harvester, which eventually allowed them to destroy the Dark Reaper. The Jedi broke the Reaper apart and scattered its pieces across the galaxy, burying the Force Harvester on Raxus Prime. This revelation led the Jedi to realize why Dooku had started by taking Ren Var. That icy wasteland was the location of Ulic Keldroma's tomb. While Dooku attacked several words with the Force Harvester, Kenobi and Skywalker launched their own assault on Ren Var. They were victorious, and Skywalker was able to make contact with the spirit of Ulic Keldroma. Ulic taught him how to withstand the Dark Reaper, and moreover, he told Skywalker where the rest of the Reaper could be found the ancient Sith planet Thule. Mace Windu, Luminara Unduli, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Anakin Skywalker led a sizable war fleet to the Thura system. They found Thule well defended. Dooku had stationed massive droid armies on the planet, and its single moon, Sivi, was home to a shield generator that protected the planet. As a small naval battle began in orbit, Skywalker diverted an assault ship to Sivi, where he launched an attack against the shield generator complex. A small force of clone troopers reinforced by TX-130 fighter tanks and the experimental AT-XT walkers deployed on the barren moon and advanced towards the generator complex. Skywalker and his forces were met with fierce resistance from Dooku's droid forces, however. They had to push through tanks, spider droids and artillery just to get to the shield generator. Even then, Skywalker was unable to breach the doors of the generator complex by force, and clone engineers had to be called in to slice them. Nonetheless, Skywalker managed to destroy the shield generator on Sivi and route all Separatist forces on the moon, allowing the Republic to commence an attack on Thule itself. Dooku and Sidon Prax had set up shop in the city of Kassiak on Thule, 
home to the armory that housed the Dark Reaper. They had brought a massive horde of droids with them, however, which the Republic would have to get past to stop the Reaper. General Kenobi took to an LAAT slash I gunship to clear out a landing area near the city, where Windu landed the bulk of the Republic's forces. Kenobi then launched an attack on the Confederacy's energy farms and then on their forward communication center, all of which were destroyed. These early attacks crippled Separatist communications, giving the Republic an edge as it moved towards Kesiak. The Republic still had a lot to overcome, however. Windu had brought several assault ships full of clones, gunships, and ATTEs to Thule, as well as ATXTs, fighter tanks, and starfighter support. But Dooku's droid armies on Thule were much larger, and to make matters worse, they were being constantly replenished by a series of small droid foundries. The droids too had more than their fair share of armored complement, including spider droids, AATs, Hailfire droids, and two other rarely used tank models, nimble ground armored tanks and HAG mortar tanks. Together with Luminara Unduli, Windu led the charge against Separatist forces outside of Kesiak. As the main clone force engaged the droids in open battle, the Jedi led groups of walkers against two more crucial targets outside of the city, the Separatist Starfighter hangars and their droid foundries. In short order, Republic's ATXTs pummeled the Starfighter hangars into dust, allowing clone pilots to establish aerial supremacy. The droid foundries proved to be a harder target, but the Jedi and their nimble fighter tanks ultimately destroyed them too. Having successfully kneecapped the droid army, Windu and Unduli pushed towards the gates of Kesiak next. Resistance was fierce, but the droids ultimately couldn't withstand the Jedi, and the Republic slowly made its way towards the city. As spider droids, AATs, and mortar tanks alike failed to stop the Republic advance, the Confederacy dispatched a pair of devastating proto Daker hover tanks to deal with the Jedi, hoping they would prove too much for Windu and Unduli. But not even the repeating turbo lasers and missile launchers of the proto decad could stop them. The Jedi ultimately managed to destroy these fearsome war machines as well. At the time, the Dark Reaper was still warming up, so Dooku dispatched Sidon Prax, his lieutenant, in a dreadnought battle tank to hold the gates. Prax destroyed Windu's tank, but the Jedi Master continued towards the gates of Kesiak on foot. With Unduli's remote assistance, Windu located a series of tunnels that led them into the city walls, where he ultimately found the gate controls. He opened up the gate and ordered Republic forces to begin an immediate all-out assault on Kesiak, hoping to stop the Dark Reaper before it could activate. At the same time, Skywalker arrived with a strike team from Civi and landed on the opposite side of the city, forcing the Confederacy into a battle on two fronts. As Republic forces poured into Kesiak, the remains of the Confederacy's droid armies did everything in their power to keep the Jedi away from the Dark Reaper. All they needed to do was buy themselves some time, as once the Reaper activated, Republic forces on Thule would be wiped out. Content with the course of the battle, Dooku left Thule around the time the gates of Kesiak were breached, leaving Sidon Prax in charge of the weapon's defense. It seemed that this was unnecessary, however, as the Reaper was close to activation, and Republic forces weren't nearly close enough to stop it. Fortunately for the Republic, they had Anakin Skywalker on their side. Skywalker hopped in a fighter tank and tore through the streets of Kesiak, shredding anything foolish enough to get in his way. With Republic forces not far behind, Skywalker made his way to the city center, where he fought a tank duel with Sidon Prax. Despite the superior specs of Prax's tank, Skywalker ultimately emerged victorious, killing Dooku's latest mercenary commander and clearing the way to the Dark Reaper. The other Jedi suggested he wait for backup, but Anakin being Anakin, he decided to attack the Dark Reaper on his own. From beyond the grave, the voice of Ulic Keldroma guided Skywalker in the assault, helping him resist the effects of the Force Harvester and evade the Reaper's defenses. Skywalker tore apart the Dark Reaper piece by piece until the Force Harvester became exposed, allowing the young Jedi Padawan to empty a whole magazine of artillery shells into it. In the nick of time, the Dark Reaper was destroyed, and the Republic was victorious on Thule soon afterwards. So that's the story of the Dark Reaper Crisis and the Battle of Thule. But what do you think? Would you like to see more videos about obscure yet major Clone Wars battles? Feel free to post your thoughts in the comments below.